Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel here I am with another great video. On this video, I will be working on the trunk of this 1965 Chevy. I will be uh, make a simple customization. And I will show you, I would say 80% of the process. I am not going to show you the whole process. Some easy thing I will ignore it and I will show you the hardest thing. So uh, that's what I will do in this video. And you can see how it is right now. I'm going to add a piece of foam right there to make it even. You can see it even to the metal in there. So I will do that first. And then I will put a two by four in there because I will uh, make a wall with the access door and I will wrap in that piece my part with vinyl. On that area, I will create another panel and you will see most of the whole process, my friends. So stay tuned to the end of this video. First thing first, I get the phone, then I mark it behind and then I cut it. And you can see right there. I trim a little bit. Okay, put them on. Perfect. So now I will put foam. I mean glue. Glue on the metal. And then glue on the foam. And you can see a little dry. Then I just put those two pieces together. So then you can make a pattern out of any material. This is the vinyl that I will use. So I just put a little bit of glue and not to hold it while, while I am tracing that thing. Okay. I get a shock and then start tracing on the edge of that phone. I put some mark in there. The purpose of those mark it is when the, I am sewing it together, uh, make it easy. Then I cut it. And always when I cut it, I give half inch for the seam allowance, half inch extra for the seam allowance. And you can see, I just made those notches, uh, obviously. And then you will start measuring all those pieces, whatever it is, if it had 10 width by uh, 24 length, don't cut them exactly, always give extra. Like I did right there, I measurement. Then I get extra, then I put a little bit of glue, just enough to hold it while I am tracing. And I had the two pieces. I had a quarter of an inch foam under the vinyl. I put glue on both uh, sizes, on the vinyl, then on the phone. You can put the phone, glue it to the metal, to the fender, or you can do it this way, like how I am doing it. I am gluing the phone to the vinyl. Then I will sew all those pieces together. Then I will take it to the car and glue it to the metal. So two different ways how you can do it. Right here, my friend, for any reason that my camera didn't record this part, but it's so simple. You get the two pieces, the top piece, then on the side piece, and put it together with those notches and sew it, those pieces together. That's how I did it. For any reason, my machine didn't record that part, but that's a simple, that is nothing, my friend. I will show you the rest of the process. After I put the simple stitch, I bring this piece to the double needle sewing machine to put a frame stitch. So simple, so easy with this machine. You can see him on there. Go slow, go slow. Making sure that a stitch is going uh, perfect. Okay, I got this piece. And I go, I'm only going to show you one side, my friend. One fender. Then I bring it to the car and I put glue on both sides. I put glue on this piece, then I will put glue on the car. I can do this on the table. So you can see how I'm putting glue in there. I let it dry. You see those marks? Those marks have too much. I put it under the metal. It is weird. I know if you have been working on this tray for a long time ago, I know you are. You already know that that part is welding to the fender. 
But in this case, I don't know what happened. It's not welded together. So that's why you see me putting the vinyl under the metal. I glue it. I pull it. I glue it. Uh, I activate the glue with hot air using a heat gun. Because after a while, uh, I put those uh, pieces together and it doesn't stick together. So that's why I, I activate the glue by using a hot air. And then I glue it. You can see it. No wrinkle, nothing like that. Make a cut and I glue it to the floor. You can see how nice that thing looks. I give you a zoom in and you can see it. Same thing right there on the bar and then I got that piece done. I just get the utility knife and cut it nicely. Beautiful. I got that part done. But that is the easy part, my friend. This is a two by four. I get a Velcro. I paint that two by four on black. Then I get a Velcro, uh, one side of the Velcro, then I staple it. I will paint on top of the Velcro, that way the staple don't see it. And you can see it two by four. And I paint it. That way, I cut a little bit on that two by four. I use this uh, kind of glue to glue that wood to the floor. If you have been watching my English channel, even my Spanish channel, where I have more than a thousand videos, you have been uh, watching me using that stuff a lot, expandable foam. And right here, it doesn't have nothing to hold that panel that I'm going to put them on there. So what do I do? I get a 3.5 density foam and cut it two by two, then I taper up. Then I put glue right here. After I put glue, I put the hard air in there to activate the glue. Then I glue that foam on there. There are three ways how you can make that thing that I make it on there. Three ways how you can make it. This is the easiest way that I am showing you. So that part dry already. Then I'm, going, I'm just going to cut it. Underneath is a cable, so I have to be careful with that cable. You see, I cut it, then I remove the excess of that expandable foam. And then I paint it. I got that part. No screw, nothing to hold the wood. Simple process. Perfect. Then I start, I start making a pattern for the wood that I'm going to cut them on there. You can make a pattern out of a lot of material, clear vinyl, clear plastic, uh, sheet board, a lot of different materials that you can use for border. I use a waterproof door panel board for this. That's the thing that I use. I cut some pieces of two by whatever length, and then you see me cutting and making the pattern for that part. See? Waterproof door panel board is what I am using to make the pattern for that side. This is the hardest thing. I'm not going to show you the other side because this is the hardest part. I'm showing you the hardest part. Why it is the hardest part? Because the battery, it is there. The other one is simple because it doesn't have a battery. Okay, you can see I almost got that pattern for this side. Just cut one more, put glue right here. Then I get this other piece. Hold it with the staple, trim a little bit. One more piece of chisel right here. And I got this side pattern. Oh, one more piece right here. Okay, I'm making sure to remove it easily, put it on easily, and I got it. Simple. I got the other side. I didn't show you how to do it. 
because it is easier than the one that I just showed you. I just remove this and I bring it to the table. That the wood that you see him on the table, it is a, they call deco wood. It's a quarter of an inch wood. I get the template, put them on top on the table, and draw all around, getting the shape of that, those uh, patterns. Then I just get uh, the TS-1000 from the snap on the blades, and I start cutting. You can use a jigsaw. You can use a, a lot of different cutting tools to cut this. I prefer using this one. So I cut it, and Okay, I got one, and I am cutting the other side. With this tool, I have more control than using the jigsaw. More control. It's because the blade is uh, it's a one inch. That's what I think I have more control than the jigsaw. And I got it. So, so what, something that I want to show you in there, I just add two air brackets in there with the small screw. I just add those two air brackets. Why do I add it in there? Because I'm going to add a piece of wood in there. And you can see I am adding a piece of wood in there. What is the purpose of that piece of wood? It is just creating the base for the wall that I'm going to be there. That's the purpose. You can see one piece of wood on the one two by four on the bottom, and then one uh, piece of wood on the top. Then I use the measuring tape to cut whatever side it is this piece of wood. I am cutting this piece of wood, but uh, I'm going to make another template for this piece of wood because it's not a straight. So I cut those strip. I bring it right here. The floor is not a straight. That side is not a straight, that top is not a straight. That's what I'm making like a template to make sure. See, I got it. See right there, it's not a straight. You see right here, it's not a straight even either. The bottom is not a straight. So I just print the template or the pattern, put them on top of the wood. The wood that I is under it is a half inch thickness foot wood. It's a nice wood. Uh, I will put some texture on that wood. That way you don't see that color of the wood. Then I get the jigsaw and I start cutting. And you can see me cutting that wood. So right here on the top is not a straight either. I just adjust that circular blaze and cut it. It's not a straight, but I adjust a circular blaze to cut that thing. And you can see it's not a straight. So right now I got a quarter of an inch thickness form. Then I got a trun lining and I'm going to glue those pieces together. You can see them, I'm putting glue. Trun lining with quarter of an inch. You might asking why are you adding foam on that trunk lining? To me, it is better to add a foam. Even, even the customer is not going to see that part. The customer is not going to notice this. But to me, it is better to add it. So I glue those two pieces, and now I am putting glue on the whole piece underneath. And you can see I go into a car and I will put glue on the middle of that car. So I got that piece with glue already. Then I come to the car and I put glue right here. You can see it. I will bring the trunk lining with quarter of an inch foam and glue it on there. I have it on there. I stretch a little bit so I just make sure to put them on the right place. And they start gluing it. Not a big deal. 
This is not a big deal. This is a simple process. Sometimes the customer want carpet in there. When the carpet doesn't stretch at all, I just put a stitches, whatever you need it, and glue it on there. But on this material, that's doesn't need a stitch because it stretch a little bit. And you can see him on there how it start looking that thing. I just trim this the side. I always get extra, my friend. If you notice, I always get extra. I never cut uh, those pieces exact. I give. I always get like extra. You can see. I just use a utility knife to trim that access material and there it is okay you can see I just get that ruler and I will trim a little bit more right that part in there right there I get a piece of wood that you saw me measurement and, cu and cutting uh, by the table by the template put them on there and they start creating the design that the customer wants. You can do anything on that wall, whatever the customer asks you to do it, you can do it. I'm going to make just an access door panel in there. Access door panel. I'm gonna be like by 10 inches by 24, 12 by 28, something like that. And you can see it. Uh, it's going, those corners are going to make it around a little bit. And then I'm going to put some uh, stitches. That piece will be white, that it will be a white stream, two inches width by whatever length. Then I will put some stitches. Okay, you can see him on there. Those, those lines might not straight. I like a little bit. You can see it. Then I bring it to the table and I use the circular saw and start cutting. Slow, slow, and exactly on top of that line. Same thing on the bottom. Slow, cutting. I need to cut that part. I will use that part. I use a jigsaw on those corners. Okay. I cut that piece out. Then you can sand it. Uh, those edges. I bring it to the router table because I need to take in a little bit of that wood on the bottom and all around. You can see it. You might asking why? Why are you doing that on the bottom? You won't see that part, but why are you doing that? Because I will wrap in this piece of wood with a vinyl, red vinyl, marine vinyl, and that vinyl will have a quarter of an inch phone. And I want to be flush, I don't want it to be uh, a bump in there. I cut and cutting those pieces of um, vinyl, and you can see I give like extra. Those pieces will be plain. So this is a big piece, and you can see it. I am putting glue on the vinyl, and I am putting glue on the quarter of an inch phone. I can put close all phone on the wood and nothing on the vinyl. And, or I can glue this phone onto the wood. But I am doing this way. I like to do it this way. I don't know if how you how you do it if you 
uh, put the closer phone or the regular phone on the wood and then you come with the vinyl or the material and staple it or glue it. There are a lot of different ways how you can do this, my friend. If you see somebody's working differently than me, it doesn't mean that that person is wrong. It doesn't mean that I am wrong. No, it's just different style to work. That's all. Different style with the same result at the end. Uh, you saw the piece underneath is black. I put a texture in there, texture in there. Then I started to put the corner. But you can see I am not pulling the material. See, I just got it and the staple. And you might ask him, why are not, you are not pulling? If I pull in, the material will be tight, be straight. I just get it and put one staple. Why I didn't pull it? Because I need to do this part first. I need to do that part first, that center, that hole. I cut it with a uh, little like an inch and a half extra. And right here, I will make some split and you will see it. You can see I don't make that cut all the way to the wood. Never, never make that cut all the way to the wood because you will able to see that wood when you staple the material. If the material is a quarter of an inch, I always make that cut a quarter of an inch to the edge of the wood. If it is a half inch thickness of the wood, I made that cut half inch away from the wood it's like that i don't want to expose the wood from outside and same thing right here i pull it and i put a staple it will be the same all around pull it and the staple now you are can see why i didn't a staple all the way around right the outside part because i am doing the inside first and i got it you can see it we make sure no wrinkle on the front outside and then you cut it evenly now that piece of vinyl is flush with the wood nothing over the wood flush then you can come and staple all around. Pull them and staple all around. This is, is an easy thing. It's not a big deal. And same thing right here on the top. The stapling, trimming, the side, I make a small cut, a split, molding the vinyl to that wood. And finish the stapling. Perfect. I got the side. And I'm going to show you the whole process, like I say, but you can see it. Then the other panel, the one where you, you uh, see me cutting a template or making a pattern, same thing. I wrap it with the same material red vinyl, marine vinyl, with quarter of an inch thickness font. Same thing. Trimming. Then I got it in there. So check this out. I can hold that panel with the screw. I can hold that panel with some magnetic. But I, I, on this video, I am show you how you can do it with Velcro. You saw me putting that uh, panel on top of the chipboard, then uh, drawing a line around. And then this is, is a Velcro, two inch with Velcro. Put him in that chipboard. 
This is one way how you can do it, my friend. One way. Okay. Then I bring it to the table. You saw me gluing those that vacuum to the chipboard, right? Now you see me putting a stitch. Why the stitch? Because I want to make sure when the door panel wood is thick with this side velcro, I want those velcro to stay in there. And right here, I am cutting the other side of the velcro. And I will glue it on that area right there. See, I put glue. And I get a velcro. This is the facet well, uh, velcro. This is the female velcro. The male velcro, it is on the chipboard. And I staple. See? This is the easiest way how you can do this. The easiest way how you can do it. Okay? Then I, I get a piece of vinyl, put glue, then I fold it, then I put a stitch. This is this just to pull it. This will be on the bottom of the uh, panel. Okay, right here, I put glue on that part, then I put glue on the chipboard, then I glue it. Then I get a panel and put them in there. Something easy. Not a big deal. Something cheap is not a big deal. Okay. In order for you to hold the access door panel, you have to make like this, like how I am doing, or with some piece of wood on the corner, or with magnet. Okay. Three ways how you can do it. I just get the door panel access, put them on top of the wood, drive it all around, they'll give one inch inch and one inch out. So total, or that would be two inches. Then I cut it. I am using wood, but I can use a door panel, a uh, waterproof board. I can, use a lot, I can use a lot of things to create this. Then on the corner, I use a, a mini reciprocal uh, saw from Blue Point and cut it. I will paint that wood in black. I will put a texture in there because I don't want to see the color of the wood. Same. I get uh, some paper and sand it. I already painted it in black. You can see I didn't show you that part because it is easier. And I'm pretty sure you will do without watching me how I'm doing it. So I got it. What is next? Next, I get a piece of velcro and I will put them on top of that wood. Simple. Simple two pieces of Velcro. And what, what is the purpose of this? Well, because the door panel axis will stick on there. You can do it with magnet. You can do it with the screw. You can do it with a lot of different things, my friend. This is the easiest ways how you can do it. Okay. Then I come to the sewing machine, I put a stitch outside, and later on I will put a stitch inside. And you can see that velcro it is the male, the ticket. The male velcro is the one where I put them on there. The fussy one is the female, and I will put them on the door panel axis. Okay, now we come with the inside stitch. Slow because I am sewing wood, the needle that I am using it is a needle number 24, and the wood it is a 1 8 thickness uh, play wood plus the velcro. Not a big deal for this machine and for this needle. So I done putting the velcro, and you can see it. I have to put them on there. First, I'm making sure both sides are equal, and then I get a staple, and then I will hold it with the staple. Okay, I staple the four corner, and then I staple all around. 
Fire A staple. I will paint those staples at the end because I don't want to see the uh, stainless steel. Check this out, guys. I cut that piece of wood. When I put vinyl, it grow. The big piece grow. So if I go with this wood and put them into there, it's not gonna fit because the vinyl make it grow. When I get the vinyl for this side, for this door panel, with the phone, it will grow more. So it will be impossible to fit in there. That's what I bring it to the router and cut a little bit. Now I can take it to the table uh, and to start cutting the vinyl. The marker that I'm using is a feature silver ink. You can use them on vinyl, leather, and you can clean it and it will come out like nothing. So whatever side it is, you have to cut that piece. And this uh, white stream will be a two inch down. So I am cutting at two inches because I will take in half inch on one side and half inch on the other side with the, with the seam. So it will be done at two inches. And I will add it at a quarter of an inch phone. You can see the phone in there and same thing right here. Put glue on the vinyl put glue on the phone, let it dry a little bit, and then cut them exactly, okay? Okay, I put the wood on top. Okay, you're going to divide that piece of vinyl on two. Then um, you're going to uh, put some lime in there and you're going to sub on top of the line. Make sure to divide the vinyl or the material exactly on two. Okay, I just draw in this way because I need to do something. It's a half inch, half inch. I put the lime on the wood, matching with the lime on the vinyl. Then I do this, okay? Then I do it this way. That way that stitch is not straight, it's like an angle a little bit. That's what the customer wants. And same thing on the other side. Then I cut it and I take it to the sewing machine and I start sewing, putting a stitch in there. That thread that I'm using is a B92, the standard thread, so it's I am not using the 210 or the 270. It's a B92 thread, my uh, Sangar brand. So now I just saw this piece of uh, white material in there. But check this out. I fold it, then I cut exactly on the top of the stitch. You might asking why? because I wanna make sure those stitch match each other. And that cut, it has to be exactly on the top of the stitch, exactly, top of the stitch. That way, when I do it this way, you can see those stitch are matching. The end, the end. Then I put them on the wood right here, guys. I just put in a little bit of glue and not to hold it enough to hold it while I am a staple. I wanna make sure those stitches, those lines, go exactly on top of the uh, line that is on the wood. Very important that part, very important. Exactly. If you see it's not matching by a quarter of an inch, unglue it and make it match. Right here I cut the wood, because I don't want a bump in there. If a bump is in there, it's not going to go in on the other piece of wood. And then I staple it all around. All around.
Then I get the knife and trim the excess material. You might asking why you didn't put a texture on that wood. Why? I will wrap that part with material. That's why I didn't put a texture in there. See, I'm going to wrap, put this material in there. And I would put a velcro too on all around. That's why. I get the ruler because I need to staple the lime or staple with, to be straight. See, I am putting my velcro all around and stapling. Can you see the wood? No, you cannot. That's why I didn't paint it. That's why I didn't put a texture in there. Now you bring it to this big piece of, of wood and get in like nothing. Very important when you cut it. Whatever thickness the material it is, you have to sand it on the door panel axis. I put that a, uh, a strip or chipboard, then I put uh, the female bear chrome in there. And then I am having a trunk lining with a quarter of an inch font. And I am putting glue on both sizes because I'm going to glue it together. This, it is for the floor. You can see it, my friend. The floor right here, it is uneven. I am putting a cheat board on the floor. I am not putting a lot of glue in case if the cotton want to remove it later. Why I am putting the cheat board in there? Because I want that area to be plain. That's why I put a cheat board in there. Then I put glue on the floor. And then I got the piece of material that you see me gluing together and bring it right here. This is the floor. Some customer want like a, a good insulation in there, a good dynamite in there, and some customer want cheap thin in there. So you see me putting a cheat board on the floor, like a flare, then you see me putting right here. And now I am putting a cheat board strip in there because I will put a bed crop in there. right there but and then i hold that velcro with the staple okay and then i will paint it so i get the that panel put them on there stick with a uh, velcro and same thing right here this it is easy to remove it in case if it's a custom want to remove it later he can do it in less than a minute Less than a minute. The carpet, it is the same carpet that it was there, my friend. That's what I'm not going to show you. The carpet is the same carpet. I just banded all around. That's all what I did. It. You saw me at the beginning making a pattern for that side. And there it is done. I didn't show you 100% the whole process, my friend. But I say, pretty sure I show you 80%. So in case if you didn't have an idea how to make a simple custom trunk, 
here you have a video where I show you an idea how you can make it. By the way, I didn't glue the carpet to the floor. Eh? I just wrap it on there. It doesn't have glue. Mm, most, of the, most of the time, I never glue that carpet. So just wanna clarify that point. So uh, for those who are learning this beautiful trunk, my friend, here you have an idea how you can make a custom, a uh, simple custom trunk. The tool, it is very important, my friend. Tool, it is very important. But what happens if you don't have a router table? Well, you can buy a, ch a cheap router and make it manually. What happens if you don't have a router? Well, you have to uh, sand it by hand. There are a lot of different ways you can do it without router, my friend. So it's not an excuse. If you want it, you can do it. If you don't want it, you will put a million excuses why you don't do it or why you don't want to do it. So thank you, my friend, for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and smash that uh, button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do it. I always upload videos related to a post on this channel. I know I have been out for a while, but here I am. I am back. I have been sick, but I am here and I am back. That's the good thing. So thank you, my friend, for watching this video. See you soon in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.